All right, folks, a recent poll conducted by In Our Own Voice, a national black women's reproductive justice uh, agenda. They did it in partnership with the nonpartisan public opinion research firm Perry Undum. It found that economic security and opportunity rank as the highest priority for most young black voters. Joining us right now is President and CEO Dr. Regina Davis Moss uh, to talk about this poll. Uh, Dr. Moss, glad to have you here. First off, okay, how many, first of all, how many people were polled? Were they all black? Yes, 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 yes. That's a, thank you for lifting that up. We are centering black people in these polls. Um, and the polling sample was it 800 to 1,000? So, the, and so what we do is in, in all in, it was 4,500 black people. For our national poll, we polled 1,000 black men and women. And then we went into nine states and polled 500 women in each state for a total of 4,500. And this is because since 2012, we've been doing this work because number one, we've been tired of people speaking for us, always having to be on the defensive, and quite frankly, just not getting it right. When we, you know, we're just only like small samples in these larger polls, and they're always uh, misreading and misrepresenting right. us. And so we set us out, out to do that, just that. Well, that was one of the points that I made uh, last week about when Stephen A. Smith went on Sean Hannity's show and they were talking about, you know, polling. I'm like, dude, y'all, y'all are speaking to a small sample of black people in that New York Times Siena, Siena poll. But you know, this is the fourth black poll, Black Pack, Higher Heights, Black Women's Roundtable, this one. So the past two months, there have been four black specific polls. So it'll be nice, at least if the black journalist uh, on mainstream would at least cite the black polls when they're discussing polling numbers. Now, what did y'all polls show in terms of the top priorities for African-Americans? So one thing I want to say is that in our poll in particular, we were centering reproductive justice. Um, and for those who do not know, reproductive justice is the right to decide if, when, and how to have a child. But also, if, when you decide to have that child, you can raise that child in a safe in sustainable environment. So that's things like Trey tri- on Martin. You know, when, when we want to make sure that kids are not exposed to excessive police force and all the other things once we have those children. And so in our polls, we found similar to the other ones that young people are not as motivated, um, that the voting issues that are top of mind, as you have already said, are cost of living, but racial justice. So things like free and fair um, elections, democracy, those are really key. Um, We are very interested. One of the things that came out is that uh, the influence of states, um, our motivations for votes, for voting, Um, black communities are, you know, supportive of abortion rights and access and comprehensive sex ed. But I don't want people to get mistaken by this. You know, this is not, it's an important issue for us, but it's not a top tier issue for us. Um, And then we start getting into things of like, what is the impact of on black women after Dobbs? And one of the things that came out is that it's really impacted black women in a very personal and life altering way. Um, There are some black women are literally scared to get pregnant at this point. Um, They are considering moving to states where there's abortions, um, that they can access them. They are considering, they're concerned about being arrested for things related to pregnancy. So there are real impacts to these things. And I don't think people should be taking these things lightly. Um, There's a real ripple effect um, of all these laws and policies. And so that's why we've got to get out and vote in every election. Question for the panel, Nola. Question, Nola. Question. <laughs> You're very funny, Roland. Um, thank you so much for doing this poll, and that is a sizable <laughs> end. That is very impressive. So my, my question is a little data-driven. So you mentioned that you polled in several cities. What what were those cities, and were they heavily concentrated black areas, or what what, what, did, what did the demographics look like? As a social yeah, scientist, so we- I'm very interested in your work. <laughs> We polled in uh, California, Georgia, Texas, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, Michigan, um, all the states where there's a large majority of black people. And, in, you know, as I've said, we've been polling for the last uh, 10 years and consistently this one comes up. You know, um, we are in places like, uh, like I said, Michigan, uh, places like Georgia, places uh, uh, um, Louisiana. Um, and so. This is uh, one of the other things that I wanted to lift up is, you know, the, the, the conversation around young voters versus black voters. Um, 
for both. Economics was in an, a key issue. Um, when we start looking at older voters, uh, things like democracy are more important, but not that, not that different. I mean, that's when, you know, when we do these types of polls, we ask them, we force them into <clears throat> ranking top tier issues. But overwhelmingly, everyone is feeling the squeeze. The hus you know, we're out here hustling. Gas prices are high. Food costs, food prices are high. Student loans. All of those things are going to be important issues in terms of how we need to be talking to voters. Thank you. Lauren. And so you're not seeing anything in the poll that would indicate any sort of benefit for Donald Trump, right? Because, of course, the media wants that horse race. They want that result. But did you see anything that would benefit a candidate on the right? I mean, we asked the question in terms of, you know, who they would vote for. So one in five uh, voters, black voters are on the fence. Fifty five percent say they would vote for Biden. Seventy five percent said they would vote for a Democrat. Nine percent for a Republican candidate. So that's about um, and then but I also want to lift up that about 20 percent are not sure and five percent said others. And that's about the same, you know, that what we see in the general population. You know, that's what, what I think is really good about these polls is that they really do represent uh, like that black people are not a monolith. Right. So, you know, we shouldn't expect that everyone's going to be, um, you know, voting in, in, in from one particular party. But we do see that it's about what we see generally, which is about 9%. Greg. Thank you, Roland, and thank you, uh, Ms. Davis Moss, for this work. Um, I'm wondering what you think the role of, if any uh, role, political education might play in pushing the needle. I mean, it was very interesting, as you say, with um, one in four 18 to 29 year olds saying they've thought about not voting in 2024, but at the same time, 72% of those young voters feel the black community has power to change elections. So there seems to be almost like a dissonance. You have the power, but you're choosing, choosing to withhold it. And I'm wondering if you, if this might be um, a, a, a message to be sent to engage in more political education, particularly around young people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the other thing I thought was interesting, I wonder if there's an age variation involved looking at the uh, issues at the top there, cost of living, racism, health care, and education being kind of closely grouped together. But at the very bottom, the war between Israel and Hamas and then LBGTQ plus rights. How should we be reading that? Are there variations in age that affect that? Or, And thank you again for the work. Yeah. Uh, so a couple of things there. I would say I love the, how you lifted up the fact that they said um, while it was 38 percent of young voters that are certain to vote, 70% that were not sure, I'm sorry, 17% that were not sure, 70, over 70% 70 said they know the power of their vote and they think it can real have, real affect real change. So what that says to me is that they know that their vote is not wasted, but it also says that they have real concerns, right? So we, you know, if politicians really want to earn the, um, the vote, they're going to have to be responsive to their needs. They're going to have to really engage with younger voters and for all that matter, black voters, you know, directly. And, you know, I like to think about things like, you know, truth and, and reconciliation. Right. So when you do that work, you just, you have to acknowledge um, you have to engage in truth and you have to provide the redress. And so and that reconciliation comes when there's political will. There's trust building. There's a transparency. Um, and then, then that falls with the su substantial investment in the resources. And so that's what the conversation needs to be. But at the same time, we also need to be talking about the, the progress, right? The progress. We have had some wins, right? And if we want to have more wins, that comes from voting. And that, that comes from saying, you know, if you care about uh, Black history being taught in school, if you care about critical race theory, all of those things, those don't, those don't happen at um, you know these national elections. Like those are things that are happening in states, and I don't think people appreciate that. You know, so that's why we have to really educate people on the process to say, if those are things you care about, that's going to require you to you know think about library councils, city council, boards of education. You need to get really educated on those candidates because that's going to make the difference. And that's that real progress we want to see happens when we continue to vote people in office that reflect our needs and our values. Doc, where do people go to actually look at the poll results and learn more about it? 
So yes, you can visit us at uh, blackwomensrj.org. And then for those that just want to get more engaged in voting in our work, we have a campaign. It's called I'm a Reproductive Justice Voter. Um, so you can follow us at blackwomen.vote or I'm an rjvoter.org. And that's what we're doing 24 seven is helping people understand how do you connect these issues. Um, you know, one of the things the mother of the movement we're talking about is that we don't, when we're talking about reproductive justice, we're not talking about, you know, pro-life, all these other things, because really the truth of the matter is all of the things that we need to be talking about happen before you get pregnant. Okay. So if you don't, you know, can't afford to pay for the child, if, you, if you're not going to be able to finish your education or these other things, what you have to think about when you have an unattended pregnancy, if you don't have good answers to those questions, then you have to have that difficult conversation about whether or not I should think about an abortion. But if you have good answers to those questions, which is a result of great policy, then an unintended pregnancy become, can become a baby. So what we want to do is p help people understand all the other issues, things like uh, the built environment, clean air, clean water, um, the cr criminal injustice system, all of those things have an impact on our reproductive decision making. All right, then. Well, we sure appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.